Hi there, I'm Peter Kistler uh, to give us the Friday wrap for HRS TV. And I'm, this, is a, this is a complete down under experience. Um, our US colleagues have, have, have left and, and tucked themselves up in bed. So I've got uh, two of our PhD fellows from Melbourne, uh, Rose Crowley to my uh, right and Jeremy William on my left. Rose, what caught your attention today? Thanks, Peter. So I thought we had a great plenary session. I really enjoyed the intercontinental named lecture uh, by Harry Crines. So looking at patterns of atrial fibrillation. So a few take home messages from that. Firstly, that the pattern of AF in terms of paroxysmal or persistent really is a somewhat arbitrary distinction that we as electrophysiologists label patients with, although it is useful in determining some of our you know, treatments that we give. Um, he also showed us some interesting data on how AF in an individual patient can really vary in its natural history in terms of lone AF, intermittent episodes, or a progressive phenotype. Um, and also talked about how what we can expect to see following cardioversion in patients with persistent atrial fibrillation and some of the treatment strategies we use for these patients. And Rose, that was particularly close to your heart after your publication earlier this year um, on our Kepler data, which showed that generally patients that recur um, after ablation for persistent AF more often present with, uh, with paroxysmal. So that was uh, really nice. And, and Jeremy, what caught your attention today? Yeah, thanks, Peter. So picking up on Rose's uh, comments, the plenary session was great. Started with a wonderful open to country, uh, welcome to country. And following that, there was a wonderful named lecture from uh, Xian Chen from Taiwan, telling us about his wealth of experience from his group with AI and the way that we're incorporating AI into our understanding of electrophysiology. And it was a real cook's tour of what can be done with AI. We started with smartwatches and single lead ECGs, and we progressed to all the complex electrocardiograms that we see in the cath lab. I think the reality is there's just a sort of wealth of information ready to be unlocked using AI. And you know, with researchers like those from Taiwan and across the world investigating how that can be implemented, I'm sort of optimistic that over the next five years we'll see great things. That's wonderful. I, I went to a really uh, nice, set, nice session today, turning our attention back to the ECG. Um, often these meetings can be a little swamped by atrial fibrillation and VT, but we turned all the way back uh, to the 12-lead ECG, and we were so fortunate to have uh, Dr. Mel Scheinman from UCSF talk to us about atriofascicular pathways. We had Dr. Nagami uh, talk to us from Japan about uh, papillary muscle and uh, Pekinji uh, muscle VT. We had Dr. Furman Garcia uh, run through the 12-lead ECG and make it look so easy in terms of identifying uh, the foci for um, idiopathic ventricular arrhythmias. So a really um, wonderful, wonderful session. It actually all kicked off with um, a case that was presented, and I'm going to throw this to Jeremy and Rose, question without notice. Uh, presented a case of a broad complex uh, tachycardia with QRS alternant, so alternating cycle lengths, with uh, two to one VA conduction, negative HV, and terminated with a sense A on a committed uh, septal uh, when the septum was committed. Now, these are the sort of cases you get at APHRS. So this was actually a manifest nodoventricular pathway. First one I'd seen. Certainly saw uh, Dr. Scheinman's eyebrows rise. So I think that just goes to show you what you, what you might see if you come down under to Sydney. Anything else caught your attention? Yeah, on the note of the humble ECG, we had an amazing session with um, Kenneth Thelenbogen and Harry Mond in the open lecture theatres in the exhibition hall where we looked at a number of challenging cases and they were unpacked in just a really simple approach with two masters of the craft. So, uh, again, the humble ECG has so many secrets to unlock. I also really enjoyed our poster hall today. So going to some of the moderated poster sessions just this afternoon, it was great to see a range of presenters from the Asia Pacific region, Australia. I saw um, some great talks on surgical hybrid ablation on how um, pulmonary vein diameter and uh, shape affects cryoablation outcomes. And also a really interesting one looking at how the location of our transeptal puncture affects the rate of first pass isolation during PVI. Well, thank you very much, Jeremy. Thank you very much, Rose.
Uh, and that's a wrap on uh, Friday from HRS TV.